Hi, everybody. It's Kay here, and this is another edition of Q&A. This is where you can come and ask any questions that you may have regarding mediumship, your development, um, anything, anything, anything goes. I never know what's going to happen. This is an unscripted Q&A. I never know what the questions are going to be. I may just spend the whole hour answering questions. I might do a demonstration of how to do a specific skill. Uh, we may practice together. It all just depends on the people who show up. You can show up too if you want to. Just mosey on over to my Facebook group, join, and then you'll have all the details in order for you to join the Q&A. It's free, it doesn't cost a thing. Might as well come join us. All right, let's see what today holds for us. Well, let's get let's get started. Um, so welcome. I'm, um, we've got some new people here today, so that's wonderful. Um, so here's how it works, you guys. You can ask questions. Um, we can practice. We can. Um, I can demonstrate and show you how to do specific skills. Um, we we can do whatever you need. I can answer questions the whole time. It doesn't matter to me. I just follow your lead. You've got me for an hour, so. Where shall we start? Yeah, anybody have a question? Just go on ahead and fire away. I had a question, but it was like kind of also asking everybody else because I'm fairly new. This is yeah. for, new for me for maybe like six, seven, eight months. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just wondering if everybody else is really new to it. And I'm finding that... I'm, I'm more clairsentient uh, slash, um, what's the word, uh, knowing, and I can hear, mm -hmm. but I find that even though I'm getting, um, how do I say this, good evidence in that kind of way, I'm still, when, when I read your book and I'm kind of reading that kind of stuff and I, and I want, I just feel like I'm not being as good of a, a medium as I want to be mm -hmm. in the evidence that I bring. And does that make sense? And I'm, it's like, I, I feel like I'm not asking the right questions or focusing on the right areas of, to, to ask a question. Cause I can get through, you know, male, female, you know, personality. Um, um, sometimes the way they died, sometimes they get a name, like I can get through that kind of stuff, but it's like, after that, I'm like, I don't know what to ask. Yeah. Um, I'll jump in and anybody else, you can share your stories as well. Um, well, first of all, welcome to our world. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it will always be your world, <laughs> whether you want it to be or not. Um, I mean, you can choose to ignore it. You, you most certainly can, but you'll find that it'll, uh, it'll come back. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for to begin with, when you first start on this journey, you're doing quite well if you can get 50% of your evidence correct. Thank you. 50%. So it, it kind of, and it can even be less than that, but you, let's just start with 50, 50, since that's an easy, easy way. Mm -hmm. So you could have 50% be correct. And the other 50% is just your imagination. That's fair. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the development of your soul. So it's about your soul and the, the abilities that you were born with just starting to come into themselves, awaken, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So it's all about that inner work that we do. So it's a process. It won't, for the, you know, almost all of us, it doesn't happen overnight. There are a tiny few where they just, you know, you know, <laughs> it just works for them magically. <laughs> but, you know, it, I don't know. I haven't, I've not really ever met anybody like that, but there are some out there. But for most of us, it's a, it's a process of the soul just coming into its truth, you know, in, in that sense. So it's it's about the inner work 
And as you start getting in touch with your own spirit within and your own soul, you get to really know your soul and you know what your soul feels like. You get in touch with your creator, whomever that may be. You mm -hmm. start, everything starts to align. And as everything begins to align, all of those clairs, which are held right there with your soul and your spirit, all of your, your clairs begin to open up as well. And they will all come in and work. Now, when we work with the spirit world, and actually it doesn't even matter if it's the living or if it's if it's then those in the other world, it doesn't really even matter. When you start blending your energy with the energy of another soul, living or not, it's almost as if, you know, you think of our, our auric field, our energy field as having a kabajillion, I'm not a math person, but that's my <laughs> math language, kabajillion uh -huh. feelers in your energy. And it's those feelers that when the other energy enters into your space, then begins to pick up on that energy spirit being, living or not. Mm -hmm. And so when I connect with you on a psychic level, it's no different than when I connect with somebody from the spirit world. So as I connect with you on a psychic level, my energy interacts with your energy. And from that, from your energy field, your whole life, all your life experiences are there. All of them. Yes. So mm -hmm. I, I can then become aware of all this stuff. And See, it's, the, it's the same way with the spirit communicators. They come in. Their energy is still there. They, they've only lost the body, the flesh. Yes. But the energy is still intact. The soul, the spirit is still intact. They come in and they blend with you. All of their life experiences are still intact because they've yeah. not been in the spirit world long enough to be in the spirit world a long time before that starts to dissipate. But um, it's all still intact attacked so it's my energy connecting with that energy and i become aware of right so mm -hmm. technically we don't have to ask questions because we're blending <laughs> and as long as you're blending you're going to become aware of right mm -hmm. now we can cry out from the soul and say help me <laughs> and help get me. help <laughs> and get help. What I have found in my own, in my own experience, I know some people can do this and it doesn't affect them in this way. So it might work for you. It didn't work for me. That's what I'm trying to tell you is every time I went to ask a question, I went to my physical mind. And the moment I go to the physical mind, I drop my power and the spirit world goes away. So when you drop your power, so when you're in your power, your energetic field is expanded mm -hmm. big, bigly, <laughs> really big. So when you drop the power, the moment you start thinking with your physical mind, your power now then comes back in mm -hmm. close to you. And as your energy draws close to you, the spirit world has no way of blending. So they kind of back away and they'll They'll, they'll be still there. They're uh -huh. still there. Uh -huh. And you might be able to get some information from them, but you're snatching. You're just grabbing anything that's in the ether out here. But if you uh -huh. put your energy back out there, after you stop thinking, put the energy back out there, then they'll say, oh, here we go. We can go back in now. Because they'll stand there and just tap their foot waiting. <laughs> For you to like just knocking at my spiritual door. <laughs> yes, yes, they are in a way, kind of just you know waiting patiently because yeah. they understand, they know that this that the human part of us gets in the way, mm -hmm. and they're well aware of that, and so they they will be very patient. Um, so it's all about the blending, 
right? Yeah. If you need to, if you need help, and we do need help in the beginning, I was, I did a lot of praying from the solar plex, from the solar plex, just cry out for help. Just say help. And your spirit guide, your spirit team will come in. They'll do, they are always working in your favor. They are always trying to help you to be successful. So just cry out for help. They're already there. Mm -hmm. I just, always ask them for help, but yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I just feel like I'm having issues or more, more more trouble blending, like, or mm -hmm. I'm not sitting in my power. And because I can't, mm -hmm. I don't notice the difference. Between that's, that's the hard part. Yeah. That's the hard part. So it's, it's, you know, you're in, in that place where you're still trying to figure what the hell is power? What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. Sit in the power. You are still yeah. there probably. Very much sitting with myself. Yes. But I don't know what myself feels like. So yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and we've all been there. Everybody has, everybody goes through this. You're not alone in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. So it's really just a matter of getting to, to know what, what, what does my own energy feel like? So if you sit um, in the silence, like if you just were to sit in the silence right now and just close your eyes and just pay attention to what does the energy around you feel like? And then if you step into that soul power you feel what does the soul power feel like and then when you connect with the spirit world you feel what the spirit world power feels like mm -hmm. if you go on my youtube channel there's a um there's a i did this with a friend of mine who is um who does meditation she's had a meditation podcast for years and we teamed up and she talked about meditation, what meditation is and why it's important to our mediumship development. And then she takes you through a guided meditation. So you can get a feel of this is what normal meditation feels like. This is what mm -hmm. my energy feels like when I'm doing normal guided meditation. Then I jumped in and talked about sitting in the power and compared the two. And then I take you through sitting in the power so you can literally feel this is what meditation feels like. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is different when I sit in the power. Because it is yeah. different. You have passive meditation yeah. and active meditation. So your energy is gonna feel different. But when you sit in the power, you go through stages so the first stage is where you just kind of sit within the power of your own soul. And that's an important step of your development, getting to know what your energy feels like. It's very important. Yes. Because that way, when you're doing a psychic reading for somebody and they have characteristics that are a lot like yours, you won't get confused and go, wait a minute, am I reading myself? And trust me, that will happen. It's happened to me. I don't you'll know. you'll be able to recognize no 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 this is not me this is not my energy that I'm feeling I'm feeling somebody else's energy and yeah they've got some characteristics that are like mine and that's okay but you'll be able to tell the difference mm -hmm. you'll do the same thing with the spirit world you'll have a spirit communicator who comes in their energy is going to feel different but they may be similar to you or somebody you know but you got to be able to, you have to be able to tell the difference between the energies. So you want to know what your energy feels like and what your soul feels like. Mm -hmm. This is a great way for you to get to know your soul and who you truly are on a spirit level. Thank you. So who you are before you came here, who were you as a spirit? Because that's who you truly are. And we have to learn how to get to know the true spirit of us. That's critical in this journey of our soul. And the more you understand who you truly are from the spirit world and how 
spirit sees you, then that helps to open up mm -hmm. all your abilities as well. The next phase of sitting in the power is when you connect with spirit. And your energy, there will be a subtle, it's subtle, so it's not hits you over the head different. It's a subtle shift in the energy and you'll start to be able to tell, okay, this is what I feel like. But when I open up to the spirit world, it shifts a little bit and it's different. Mm. And the next phase is feeling when the spirit comes in because then that's another whole subtle, not hits you in the head, but subtle shift when somebody comes in and invades your space and you're like, well, somebody's here. I felt the shift. <laughs> So, energy, you know, this is energy work. And this yeah. is going within work when you sit in the power. So I would recommend that you go do that. I think it's like an hour long. It was a Q&A that we did it. I think Brooke was here. Yeah, I'll look it, it up. Um, I have it on my phone, but I'll, I'll go through it and find it too. Yeah, I think, I don't know what it's called. Meditation versus sitting in the power, maybe. I don't know what I called it. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, I've I've had not I've had a lot of really good feedback for those that don't know what's the difference between mm -hmm. because yeah. there is a difference. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe that's what I'm feeling. I usually use guided stuff, but even and with it, sitting in the power of guided stuff, and I'm like, I need to be quiet. I think. Yeah, and so for me, um, sitting in the power, it it's it was guided in, when I learned it. But once I, you know, and I learned it from my mentors at the college, but once, um, once I understood the process, the steps that I needed to go through to get into the power, I no longer had to have the guided part. Mm -hmm. So I would just either sit in the silence or sit with some soft music. If my mind was really active on that day, I'd put some music on just to help my mind. But um, now I don't need anything. I just sit, sit, sit silence, sit in silence. Yeah, I'll I think that might help. Thank you. That's how, that was a long answer. No, good. <laughs> Does anybody else want to add anything to that? Who, okay, who was that? Tanya. Oh, Tanya, yeah. Hi. Hi. So we did an exercise on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and the exercise was one knock, two knock. Yeah. There is. So, and not saying anything, zero feedback. Mm -hmm. With that, I found that really difficult, mm -hmm. but I'm, which is fine. I'm totally okay with that. I'm more curious as to why I felt it was difficult. Um, because the validation is, even if you're getting validation or feedback from your sitter, you're still going to listen to your communicator um, so, when you can feel something's off. So the, sorry. So what, what part was difficult? Was it the information or blending or? I felt like the information was an information overload and becoming immobile in it. Okay. Not so, having that space be fluid. So you're working with, you know, three people, right? Three people mm -hmm. in that space, your spirit communicator, yourself, the person in front of you, and there's this lovely a wow. give and take flow that happens and I found that once the sitter was not able to that's the goal not say anything and you're solely dependent on your communicator it really I really noticed the difference of having that piece be cut off momentarily even if it's with energy you're still connected right but there was something in there that wasn't working and that's the piece that I'm interested in yeah I found that I didn't like doing that exercise either <laughs> I'll be honest with you yeah because it's um you 
uh, for me personally, I, I need that validation. I need to know right. I'm on the right track kind of thing. Right. But the whole purpose of that is to get out of that mode. That's the whole purpose of that exercise is to not care if you're right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Just allow yeah. the spirit world to come in and blend with you. And you just give what you're, what you're becoming aware of. You that's bet. That's, mm -hmm. that's all we're supposed to do. So when, when you were doing that, was, was the information coming in? I found that it was, it felt stagnant. It felt um, jagged. It didn't have that smooth, that smooth line where you just kind of fall into it and things are coming in really naturally. It felt like there was a, it was very staggered. So and a little bit of a disconnect then. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. a disconnect. It, it, I wasn't there, so I don't know. So I'm just going to give possible possibilities there for sure. could, have, for sure. could have been that um you just weren't in your power like you like you can be you weren't uh, it wasn't a strong power so then it could have been that you were just reaching and grabbing for whatever came whatever was floating out there so that's one one possibility the other possibility is um, you could have also been without really knowing it in your subconscious um, getting in your way because you knew you weren't right. going to get a yes or no. Right. So how do you know the difference between that and perhaps your communicator, say, while they were here, being a more of an introvert or a not entirely effective communicator right. and and well, discerning the difference yeah well i will say this um i know that i know that there are spirit communicators that have to work hard yeah to get to get them to you know it's like yeah. i'm a cheerleader come on right yes <laughs> let's do this yeah i know i know that but i don't i don't necessarily believe that it's always with somebody who was very introverted in life agreed because right. my my dad never spoke ever and he's a phenomenal spirit communicator yes makes no sense right blows my mind right. it's like you didn't say two words <laughs> <laughs> when you were living, but he is an amazing communicator. And, and he comes in all the time when I'm working with somebody who's never mm -hmm. given a reading before he, he jumps right in and he just works with them. I mean, cause I, I see what he's doing yes. and it just blows my mind. So, um, Right. I, don't I know certainly. If, I don't know if we can say it's the communicator. Right. I right. Question exactly. That maybe it's me. Maybe it's right. me is the reason why I'm having to really coach this communicator to come in and work with. Me. Right. Right. The intelligence of spirit does not require coaxing. Exactly. It's so. Me. <laughs> then, hello. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm always the issue, and that's okay because learning that's part of learning, and I'm comfortable right. with that. Yeah. But the discerning piece on what to do next in that space is, is where I think the difficulty is for me. I've observed anyways. Yeah. But so, you know, you're getting in your own way. You so do we know. Get in your, yes, you do. So then what? Then what? Um, it, I think you're doing what, I think you're doing what you can do. You acknowledge the fact I got in the way mm -hmm. next. You just say next because he, one of my mentors is, is famously known for saying, you're mm -hmm. only as good as your last reading. Right. Yeah. And there is a lot of truth in that. And I'm, I'm telling you know, I can't tell you how many times I've like just blew it out of the water with an amazing reading shocked myself 
next reading <laughs> fell flat right, on the face. Just, and then the next reading uh, all back to back. Right. And then the, and then the third reading I'm back up to, oh my God, that was an amazing. Why did I fall in the middle? Right. It's, it's right. I, th you know, I think it's, could it be that all the stars just have to align, meaning I have to be the right medium for that spirit communicator? Okay. So if it's not going anywhere, it's, it's fair. When you, and when you say next for clarification, next communicator come in, next we're not going to go there. Next. Um, just for <laughs> clarification, just, just a hot hard pass on this environment let's I just do this. i love you thank you for coming let's move on <laughs> right. rather than trying to squeeze or choke out information that just no doesn't i'm gonna feel... I, i'm gonna work with them and i might yeah. have to work my butt off to do it right and i um and i acknowledge that that yeah that was not easy Next. right because right i don't want to one the next one may be easy. It may not yeah. be. It may be hard. I don't. I don't know. You. Right. you that's the thing. You never know if it's no. going to be easy, hard. You don't. Just right. It's it's the Goldilocks syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Right. You and never and know. being comfortable, being comfortable working in difficult places. Yeah. When you know things are flat and things are not going ideal, you acknowledge it. You can acknowledge it and then try to work and then, with it and change it. Right. If, so what is the that? The energy is like? not. Yeah. yeah. So I was always um, taught that if the energy of the room is not right. It's your job as the medium to change it. To change it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're working one on one, if you're working with 300 people in an audience. You, the medium, are in charge of the energy of the room. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Because you, you do get difficult clients. Uh, um, that was, that was a piece. That was a piece. Yeah, that yeah. was a piece. Yeah. I think, you know, and generally, we as mediums, we understand where the person's going. So there's a lot of leeway. Yeah. There's a lot of leeway. Right. We're right. very forgiving and show tremendous grace with each other yes. because we can see and feel and, and know what's happening. Right. Which is lovely. However, yes. when you are then working with a non medium who does not have that understanding and it is your job mm -hmm. to then navigate that, um, the potential for having them say, but I want to communicate with that person. We all know how that can go. Um, and being able to say this, that's not a, a workable situation at the moment, but we have the option and choice to move on and see who comes in next as a, as a strong communicator that we can work together with. Right. Yeah. So like if, if the sitter doesn't want to hear from that loved one, is that what, what you're meaning? Or they just want Are to difficult hear. From one. Yeah. Just, just plain difficult um, yeah. because they're working on something, right? It's a different, yeah. you know, something's happening. And it's people. And you'll have those that come in and they want you to prove it. I felt a little like that, yeah. Yeah, just prove it. Right. I was doing a church service and I was sharing this service. Actually, was it a church service or maybe it was an evening in the medium? It was an evening in the mediumship is what it was. And um, there was two other guys that were working with me. And this one guy, it was, he was working and um, he was um, working with a, a gentleman in the, in the audience who was adamant, adamant that he tell him the name of the spirit communicator. Right. He mm -hmm. was adamant on it. Yes. And he was being a really difficult uh, recipient. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to accept any of the information until he gave him the name. First name, last name, full name, nickname. Any name. He any wanted name. to know who he was speaking to. Okay. Okay. And he expected him. And, and, and bless my friend's heart because he was 
being very much a gentleman and was trying to work with this other gentleman and um and finally <laughs> finally he just looked at him and he said we would all love to know his name. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we know? I would love to be. And yeah. he just kind of laughed, you know, tried to, you know, bring some laughter because yes. he obviously wasn't a medium himself, this the the recipient, the sitter. But a lot of the people in the audience were all spiritualists. They knew they know mediums. So um they know how it all works. And they know you don't always get names. Mm. And so it got a laugh. It got a little bit of laugh, you know, chuckle in the audience yeah. that brought the energy back up. For and sure. he just said to him, you know, I give you what I'm getting. You understand this, 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 and this. And he goes, yes, I understand everything you've said is correct. But it means nothing to me if you can't tell me who you're speaking to. And he just, you know, mm -hmm. joked about it and said, well, we would all like to know his name, but I'm not getting the name. This is, this is what I'm getting. And then he just, yeah. he did this and moved on to the next one. But right. it's like, yeah, you know, but you get those kind of people. You do, you do, but working in that difficult space, I guess, just discerning when it's time to have it be okay this is not moving well let's right. choose let's choose yeah. something wise okay. yes and if it's um if you're working if you're working on platform you know five minutes and you can you can tidy it up and move mm -hmm. on if mm -hmm. you're working with a sitter like a one-on-one -on -one sort yeah. of situation you can always check and see and bring in somebody else in that kind of a situation but if you have a difficult sitter and um, it's just not moving for you, yeah. you always have the right as the medium, you are the one in charge always um, to just end the reading right there. And I've, I've been in situations like that where I was just getting, yeah, literally right. no, no exaggeration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Picking up on that. Yeah, you're well, reenacting the whole yes. this language, you know. And I'm as the medium going. I don't like that. I want to hear. Yeah. I want that. You know. That's what I need. Yeah. And I finally, after it was less than ten minutes, just stopped the reading. I just stopped yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I said to her, I said. I said, this isn't going well. I can tell you're not happy. No, no, no. I, you know, I, you're, you're getting all the evidence, right? And I said, yes, I may be getting it right, but you're not happy. So I, I'm more than happy to just refund you your money. But she insisted that I continue. She wanted me to continue. So I did. And I went a little bit further and finally it just, you know, lights yeah. went off and I just leaned in and I said you don't want to hear from this person do you and she goes it's not that I don't want to hear from them I, you know I'm happy to hear from them and I said but it's not the person you were hoping for and she goes correct and I said give me their name right and I'll, I'll see if they're here what I can do it. yeah and and it was the right thing for me to do. I, I, I wished I wouldn't have taken that long. I should have done it at the, when I stopped to begin with. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I just continued on. And then it hit me. Oh, my God, she's wanting somebody else. This is not the person she wants to hear from. So it, it, it turned out for her, she really needed to hear from the other person. She was a grieving okay. mother. She needed to oh. hear from her child. And the child, you know, so I, they, she gave me the name and I, I, I quickly picked up on the child and mm -hmm. brought the child through and the whole reading changed. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, and I felt, I felt bad as the medium. I felt bad that I didn't pick up on that sooner. I should have picked up on that sooner. But um, the last 30 minutes of the reading, 
was with who she needed to be. So more of that story. She was hard in the beginning. <laughs> and it brings your energy down as a medium. It does. It does. Right. So just learning to navigate. So if it's getting, it's getting to the point where it's not. It's not working. It's not Rather, working. You always have the right to just stop. If it's not working. Right. I guess the point of class is to be able to dive into those areas and stumble around and have it be yes. uncomfortable and navigate and, what works for you. Yes. And in <laughs> class, if you have a difficult sitter, and, and that will happen, I'm sure. If you have a difficult sitter, that's a perfect opportunity for you to learn how to work with a difficult sitter. Right. Yeah. So that, that, those are wonderful lessons. Yes, they really are. They're, yeah, are they valuable. really, really, really are. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the outcome is in the end, yeah. because it's the lesson that you're learning as you're working through that. You're learning how to work through it because as a professional medium, we do have to learn how to work through difficult sitters if we can. We really need to learn how to work through that. Right. Yeah. I, I think we I think we can. Yeah. I think we can for the most part. Um, you know, if if you have somebody who's belligerent or abusive towards you, absolutely show them the door. Valid Absol point. Absolutely. Okay, so as the medium, yes, you can stop when you want to. If it's stumbling around and not going anywhere, just wash it and move on. Okay. Yeah, and just say, or just, or just do, um, and you don't even have to explain to your sitter what's going on. You can just say, bear with me a moment, and then just do a quick sweep of the room. Who else is here? Mm -hmm. Because they don't, I mean, rarely do they come alone. Just see who else is here and bring somebody else in and that might change everything. That's there. That's the, that's a good piece. Okay. Because it might be somebody who's talking to somebody. They might got it. Yeah, okay. there, there could be. Yeah. <clears throat> so just check and see who else is with that person and just see if you can bring somebody else in. Um, yeah. And, and I guess if, if you know that your sitter is not happy, you this is what I learned. This was my lesson. It's okay to jump, just stop and say, was there somebody else that you were really hoping to hear from today? Let me just see if they're here. Right. Because sometimes, well, it was with another medium. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, it, when the, and this was the one where you weren't getting feedback. Right. Yeah. So a breakout room, the knocks, of course, they weren't working, what have you, but yeah. So just chalk it up. Okay. Chalk it up as a lesson and and hopefully it won't happen again. Oh, it's gonna happen again. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, that's how it rolls. <laughs> we can hope. <laughs> oh well. Thank you for that. I have a lot of really good information on that um, to navigate that because that's that's real life. Did you ever do, um, there's a component that, you know, it's been brought up before about if you're a medium, <clears throat> it's wise to do a course of some kind on these cycles of grief so as to be able to identify where your sitter could be if they're coming to you in a place of um, of being still quite upset. Yeah, I think I no, I don't know. I don't know if I have I ever talked about that. I don't know, or have I? I don't think I've not so much ever uh, been in any of my training, but I do think that's a really good idea for us to understand the grief and I'm the worst at it I'll be honest to say that I'm the worst and of all the people I need that course <laughs> I definitely do um but I do think that's a, a really really good idea absolutely 
um, this little, this fellow though, this had been an, this had been a whole life situation. <laughs> mm-hmm. he, he'd struggled mentally his whole life. Right. Yeah. Has anybody else here done a course of some kind? I feel like there has been. I'm going to ask. So, okay. Yeah. Lovely. I would. I would definitely recommend it. And if if you you know. I mean, I would take it in a heartbeat. Right. Absolutely. An online one that's available. Yes. Perhaps there's some recommendations in chat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and um, Tony Stockwell is mm-hmm. um, offering offering a, a course like right now, I think, or coming up real soon on grief, mediumship and grief and mm-hmm counseling kind of thing I don't know I don't know if it's I don't think it's started yet but I I know that he mentioned that the other day so um might be that one might would be a good one Brooke I think a course on mediumship and grief like you said Tony's offering would undoubtedly be rich but Mm -hmm. Tanya, I wouldn't say you needed to take a whole course on grief because grief is different for absolutely everybody. And I mean, that if if there's one takeaway about grief, get that. I mean, people grieve in different ways. I mean, there are cultural differences in terms of how it's approached, how it's held, how it's experienced, the whole deal. But, you know, if you're if you're looking, you know, for just a basic primer kind of thing, just get Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's basic book i mean you know she she introduced you know she really broke through the barrier years back but at the time she did it people were thinking her sequences were sequential or her her pieces the stages of grief are not sequential people can go in different order and around and you know the the best models i've seen and i can't think of the name of the man that that's done it but it's much more of a spiral than a you know, a level, but just, and it's, it's, you know, if, if you're comfortable reading about grief, it's an easy read. She, her language isn't, isn't difficult. Um, you could just, you know, even just familiarize yourself with some stuff online, just for some basics. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I would say past that you're in here because you're studying to be a medium. And the, the greatest thing you could do is just trust your gut. What are you picking up mm-hmm. from this person? and gear yourself, you know, thoughtfully accordingly. So that's my, that's my two bits. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But it's nice to know, I like, I'm the worst. I I never know what to say when somebody's (laughs) going through a difficult time. And I, I have difficulty finding those right words. Hey, there are Um, no, there are no right words. I mean, that's, that's where it's just like you know it's I called my sister-in-law the other day because my brother-in-law died last week and all I could say is I'm so sorry you're going through this I don't there are no words and she said she said there are no words and proceeded to talk for an hour and that's what yeah so that's that's what time is good but if you have a client um you know the best that I have to offer is you know, I can hold out my hand and hold their hand if they need that. I can, I can be a listener. I can do that. Um, right beyond that. But case a lot of mediums have, I mean, I've seen them and I've heard people say that in their client forms, for instance, they're very explicit. They don't want to do a reading for someone who, 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 who wants Who's in? Who's had someone meaningful die right. within six months or yeah. or a year? Right. Yeah. You can put that out in terms of your disclosure. All right, guys. Good question. All right. Goodbye, Kate. All right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>